okay so hello everyone welcome to this video discussion so for this video we're going to talk about analysis of variance or known as ANOVA okay analysis of variance okay so for this discussion we have this and for this PDF I have here the table of contents we're going to introduce some various statistical tests first and then we're going to define ANOVA and talk about one-way ANOVA, two-way ANOVA, demanova, or multivariate analysis of variance and then ANOVA with repeated measures and then other related tests and also the references. Okay, let's proceed. So first, let's talk about the summary table of statistical tests. In here is most likely all of the tests was already in here. Test for association, test for significant difference, test, test for, yeah, more likely like that. So when, when you're going to do a analysis or statistical test, if you're going to ask what kind of test you're going to use first thing you need to make uh, you need to make sure or you need to know is what is your what is the quality or what is the kind or the type of data you have so you're going to evaluate your data and see what level of measurement is your data is it categorical or nominal or is it rank or ordinal or is it in interval or ratio? So basically, for interval and ratio type of data, those are the numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or the numbers with decimal like that. So it is also known as parametric or parametric. And then for data that don't have those like numbers or it's more like in ranking like good very good like that or good average and very good that is what we call the rank or in ordinal and then for categorical data or nominal like categories like male and female something like that so in here so you're going to evaluate your data, eh, which of these or answers your data or what kind of data you have. And the next question you're going to ask is how many samples you're going to deal with. So for it can be one sample alone, it can be two samples or k samples, three or more, something like that. Or if you're going to deal with relationships, so these are correlation, that's another thing. So in here, if we're going to focus here in parametric, you can see there's the Z-test or T-test. And then there's the T-test between groups, T-test within groups. So if you can recall our previous topic, our previous discussions, we have discussed the T-test or test, con test for significant difference of two means. We also have the T-test. Uh, Z test and T test as our test statistics for tests concerning proportions, right? So those are some parametric uh, statistical tests that we did. And as you can see here, there's this ANOVA. So we're going to talk still about parametric area and we're not going to talk about here or we're going, not going to discuss this area for our, the rest of our class. So in here, just a brief overview, you can see here there's a x squared, right? So that's what we call chi-square, okay? So chi-square is used for tests uh, concerning association. Like for example, if there is this group of people, male and female, and then they are us on who, who are they're going to vote for the presidential candidates. So those things is like categorical and then you're asked to choose within those options. It's still categorical. Like we're going to ask if there's an association between the gender among their preferences. So those are the type of data that you're going to use for chi-square. 
And man with me you, so there's chi square is x squared, okay? Man with me you, it's more like if there's a significant difference among those ranks or order, something like that, okay? Okay, so if we're going to, like you're going to have uh, your thesis or you're going to do some research and you don't know what test you're going to use, you can use this chart as your guide. Anyway, let's proceed to ANOVA. So what is ANOVA? ANOVA is a statistical technique specially designed to test whether the means of more than two quantitative populations are equal. So that is three or more. It was developed by Sir Ronald A. Fisher in 1920s. So that's a long time ago. So for example is this one. The study conducted among men of age group 18 to 25 year in community to assess effect of SES on BMI. So we have three levels. We have the lower SES, the middle SES, and then the higher SES. So the goal here, if we're going to test if there is a significant difference among lower SES, middle SES, and then the higher SES based on their BMI, okay? So it was identified a number of samples or the N n1 n2 and n3 and also the mean among these levels okay so when talking about ANOVA so there are three maybe three or more like if one way ANOVA there is this one sample so one way ANOVA it's like or one variable is like of this idea we're going to to get if there's an effect of SES on BMI. So we're just considering one variable here is just the SES. But when talking about two-way ANOVA, we're going to consider two variables now. It's like the effect of age and SES. So we have here the age and the SES on BMI, okay? And then for three-way ANOVA, we have here the effect of age ses and diet on bmi so we have now the three variables okay then if we're going to talk about four-way anova then we're going to have four more variables so those are the concept of anova okay so anova with repeated measures comparing great three or more uh comparing greater than uh, three or more group means where the participants are same in each group like for example for three-way ANOVA we have here the effect of age SES diet on BMI that means if we have one respondents you're going to take the age of that respondents and also the SES you're going to take that information from that specific respondents and also the diet and then for your next data group of data another respondents same thing you're going to take the age it's SES and then it's diet and so on and so forth okay so for example the group of subjects is measured more than twice generally over time such as patient weight at baseline and every month after a weight loss program so when talking about repeated measures that means that certain uh, the certain respondents you're going to take the information twice or there's a repetition repeated measures as it said here for example a patient you're going to take the weight at baseline and then for next month you're going to take the weight again like after a weight loss program something like that okay so next is first let's focus now on one way ANOVA for one way ANOVA we have here the data required for one way ANOVA one way ANOVA or single factor ANOVA means we're going to determine the mean of more than three independent groups or levels or what we call levels significantly different from one another okay only one independent variable or factor or grouping variable 
with three levels like that. Three or more levels, okay? The grouping variable should be nominal. And then the outcome variable should be an interval or ratio. And then we have here what we call post hoc test. Help determine where difference exists. Okay. So in doing ANOVA, there's always an assumption because this is a parametric test. When we say parametric test, my God, it should always uh, comply to the assumption of normality. The values in we each group are normally distributed. And also the homogeneity of variances. That means within each group should be equal for all groups. That means the variances should be equal for all groups. That's what we called here. And then next is we have the independence of error. So the error should be like independent from each level, okay? So it doesn't mean that the error of the first level can affect the error of the next level. It should be independent from each other. Okay. So next here we have the steps when doing ANOVA or analysis of variance. Same thing, same steps that we had in our previous discussion about t-test or test concerning two samples only so first you're going to state the null and the alternative hypothesis and also state the alpha or the level of significance and then calculate degrees of freedom state decision rule and then calculate test statistics and then calculate variance between samples calculate variance within the samples calculate ratio f and then if f is significant perform post hoc test and then state results and conclusion so as you can see there is a lot of computation when doing ANOVA but for our discussion we don't have to compute because we're going to use a statistical software for this case okay okay so your null and alternative hypothesis you can state it in a statement form or a sentence form or in symbol form so for symbol form you can have this one mu1 is equal to mu2 that 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 is equal to mu colon and then for alternative or ha not all of the mu i are equal and then for statement form you can say all sample means are equal and then for the alternative statement form at least one sample has different mean Okay, and then, for example, you state the alpha of 0 0.05, calculate the degrees of freedom, and then state the decision rule. Decision rule, if calculated value of F is greater than the table value of F, we reject the null hypothesis. And then calculate test statistics. You can see this or you can really follow the steps if we're going to do a manual computation. But since we're not going to do a manual computation, uh, that's okay, just familiar familiarize yourself about the steps. Anyway, I'm going to do a run-through of an example later or on, our, on my next video about that, okay? And then we have calculating variance between samples. Calculate the mean of each sample and then calculate the grand average. Take So this is how are you, you're going to calculate the variance between samples. Take the difference between sample means of various various samples and grand average. Square this deviation and obtain total, which will give sum of squares between samples. SSC. Divide the total obtained in step 4 by degrees of freedom to calculate the mean sum of squares between samples. Okay. And then we have here calculating variance within samples. Calculate the mean value for each samples and then take the deviation of our various items in the samples from the mean values of respective respective samples square these deviations and obtain total which gives us sum of squares within the samples sse that's what we call sse sum of squares within the samples or this is also known as sum of square error okay divide the total obtained entered steps by the degrees of freedom to calculate the mean sum of squares within samples mse mean square mean square error okay 
So, here are the notation. Para mas klaro siya, guys. And then, another formula for F. So, we have here, compare the F statistics value with F critical value. This F critical value is you're going to obtain this one based on the alpha or the level of significance on a probability or F distribution table. Which we don't need to get because we're going to, as I said, we're going to use a statistical software for this computation. Which is obtained by looking for it in the F distribution table against degrees of freedom, as I said. The calculated value of F is greater than table value, then the null hypothesis is rejected. So, the explanation here is this one. The between group variance, this is the between group. It was said that if mas taas na siya, so we're referring to three levels here, right? So the three levels here is ganisha. In each level, there is a normal curve. And then, we're going to compute the variance for between group variance. This one. We're going to compute the between group variance. And also, we're going to compute the within group variance. It was stated that mas, pag mas dako ni siya kaysa aning within group variance, then that means there is a significant difference among the means or there is at least one that differs. But on the other hand, kapag ninani siya guys, between group variance is mubo that means the ulra kaya mga distribution sa data for each level. Kaisa sa within group, within group variance, then that means there is no significant difference. There is no significant difference kay dool naman kay siya, pariya raman siya. Okay? Muna siya explanation, any guys. And then we have here the post hoc test. Post hoc test is used to determine which mean or group of means is or are significantly different from one another. As you can see, for example, you have three levels. And when doing ANOVA, you're going to answer that kung nabay significant difference or wala. Ana lang, yes or no. But we cannot identify using ANOVA kung asa ato nila ang ming lahi. That is why naasi post hoc test. Post hoc test is the one who's going to identify kung aha ato ang ming lahi sa ilaha asa nga level ang significantly different among the group. Okay? When talking about post hoc test po, there are different kind of tests or procedures. We have the Bonferroni, the two case HST procedure, and then the Chaffe procedure. The Bonperoni is also known as the more powerful. Only some pairs of sample means are to be tested. Desired alpha level is divided by number of comparisons. And then we have the 2K when all pairs of sample means are to be tested. And then we have here the Chaffe procedure when sample size are unequal. Okay. But you don't have to worry about this and how to solve this one because we have the statistical software which we're going to obtain the answer directly, okay? And I have here the NOVA table. So basically, when you're going to run uh, data from a software, that software is the one who's going to compute those numerical values. And then, as a result, the software is going to show this ANOVA table. In which there are numbers in there already, okay? So, say for example, this one. Okay, three samples obtained from normal populations with equal variances. Test the hypothesis that sample means are equal. So, we have here three. And then, so we're going to state the null hypothesis, no significant difference in the means of three samples. You can state it that way. And we're going to state the alternative. It was not stated here, but make sure to state the alternative hypothesis, okay? And then also the alpha, and then calculate the degrees of freedom, and then state the decision rule. So, this 3.88 here, it was taken from the F distribution table based on the level of significant na 0 
and then calculate the test statistics or katong si F. So in calculating, we have here gikwa sa ang grand average. Actually, gikwa ang average sa first group, second group, and then third group. And then gikwa ang grand average. And then after getting the grand average, gikuha ang sum of squares. So this is how you're going to get the sum of squares between samples. Kana siyang N1 is that is the number of samples, okay? And then M M1 is this one, M. And then grand average and then M2. No. Okay. So in doing this one, it was really actually discussed on the steps a while ago. Katakong gibasa, guys. But don't worry about this much because we're going to use a statistical software so you don't have to compute, okay? You don't have to compute. Okay, next is variance within samples. And then, so it was computed that way. Follow lang ninyo guys, ha? And then, the F statistics. So if you have now the MSC and then the MSE, 20 and 5, which is this one, 5, and then the other one is 20. So you can have how uh, the F statistics, which is 4. And then for your computation, if you're going to do a manual computation, you can say it this way, the table value of F at 5% level of significance for DF2 and 12 is 3.88. This 3.88 was taken from F distribution table, okay? So don't worry about that. The calculated value of F is greater than table value. The calculated value is this one, number 4. And the table value is this one, 3.88. Thus, we reject the null hypothesis. Hence, there is a significant difference in sample means. And also, there is this, what he called the shortcut method, which I'm not going to elaborate much. Just, just explore it and familiarize yourself, okay? And then I have here the example for PSS, which we're not going to, uh, which maybe I'm going to have my example next for my next video. I'm going to show you how to do it in SPSS and also in Microsoft Excel, okay? And then we have here the violations for assumptions. Let's say your data don't, uh, don't pass the normality assumption. So that means you cannot use the ANOVA test, ANOVA, but instead you use the cross wallis edge test. That is the same with ANOVA, but this is for non-parametric tests, okay? Choose the non-parametric cross wallis edge test, which does not require the assumption of normality. And also, if the homogeneity of variances was not met, you can use the Welch test or the Brown and for scythe test or the cross wallis edge test okay and here for our next discussion we're going to talk about the two-way ANOVA but first I'm going to show you how to do it in Microsoft Excel or in SPSS software on my next video okay so for now those may be the katulansa okay so that's it and just explore the following discussion for advanced reading, okay? And have a great day.